and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode of the Wrestling Realm. And we are on our look backs at WrestleMania. I'm on my number four, top four, top fourth WrestleMania, however you want to put it. Four favorite WrestleManias to say? Yeah, that sounds better. I sure we do whatever we want. <laughs> deal with it. Took the words out of my mouth. That's how we're going to say it and deal with it. Yeah. With that. And that's the main event. All the way to the bank. So, oh, yeah, in case you're just joining, he is the Road to Wayne Allen. That is I. I am Mr. Main Event Brian Waters. NWO style. You know. So, number four. I brought you my fifth WrestleMania. If you don't know, go back. Just turn, type in Wrestling Rome in YouTube. You'll find it. You'll say top five WrestleMania. Um, number four, WrestleMania 15. Remember the build-up like it was yesterday. The, uh, we we are in the height of that era that everybody in the wrestling realm group page loves so dearly that they just want to go back, regardless of what was going on in their life. Even if they hadn't reached puberty yet, they want to go back Why? to the Attitude Era. Yeah, they just <laughs> it's great, getting along, can we? Great era of wrestling, but I mean there was times where they were doing attitude-ish like. Things, but it wasn't an attitude there. Naturally, you know, up until about 2007, and after 2007, they went PG. Okay, you know, I mean, you can look back at Royal Rumble '07 when Kelly Kelly has uh, the Royal Rumble numbers, and she says to undertake, no, she says the Triple H, you know, I'm holding your balls. <laughs> Obviously, uh... you know. There was a lot of those type of messages during this Attitude Era. And afterwards, folks, I'm just saying, there is wrestling besides the Attitude Era. Get over it. Yeah. So, we start off, what a match. Um, I mean, what a night. We had so many titles on the line. Mm -hmm. WrestleMania, you always look for that big switch. That big, who's going to turn on who. And that night, we got it. Definitely. We'll get there, as I always say, because I'm not going to give you the whole show in the first ten minutes, first five minutes. That's stupid. Um, but we live in Philadelphia, First Union Center. Shouts out to my boy Hugh. I remember because we was in um, seventh grade, and he was on the tribal basketball team at this time. Said he was in Philly and wanted to go to WrestleMania so bad, couldn't. But guess what? WrestleMania 28, we in there like swim with. Yes, sir. So we start off with a hardcore championship. It's Hardcore Holly defeating the champion Billy Gunn and Al Snow. This is what I'm gonna say to you, Mr. Real Dwayne Allen. Mm -hmm. This was interesting because we're we're DX. They're at the height. They either leave WrestleMania with a title or they go in with a title. Mm -hmm. Out of well, out of th three of the members, three out of going into it, there are four. Three out of four have a title. Right. At this time. You thinking that Billy Gunn is going to go more towards the Intercontinental title? Because yeah, we all thought that though. He was more prone. I don't mean to say it in a in a not trying to use that word because I don't use it. But excuse me, shouts out to Mike Knox in a broke back way. Uh, I see. But he was more the title fit his. He was more pretty five four. If that's even a word. You you, you make a good point because I remember when him and Road Dog had when Road Dog had the uh, IC title and he had the hardcore title. Everybody was like, well, are they just going to switch? Right, cause because Road Dog started off going after that hardcore belt. Royal Rumble '99, he loses to the Boss Man in an opening bout. Mm -hmm. 
but so does Billy Gunn lose the Shamrock, both titles, you know, both of them going to those titles. And, um, or the Road Dog beat, I don't remember. Road Dog might have won, I don't, no, Road Dog did lose. But, Road Dog was more hardcore. You, you remember That's Jerry right, yeah, Lawler yeah, yeah. saying, look at Road Dog, he is hardcore. You know, he had the, the shave, you know, now all this is gone, but he had the little braids coming out. Right. You know, he was doggy style, he was hardcore. Right. But, you know, so they, they kind of switched, but I thought it was a good way to open up the show in a hardcore match and hardcore Holly getting a uh, win. Who, in my opinion, was great in the ring. He was great on the microphone. It's just something about hardcore Holly that just couldn't break through that glass ceiling. Yeah, he was old school to me. Okay. I think, I don't think, I don't think, I think he suffered from what a lot of mid card veterans suffer from mm -hmm. is that they're they're too old schoolers and they feel like I'm not I shouldn't have to change because I'm old school. It's like mm -hmm. I don't think it works that way, buddy. <laughs> you feel I me? Mean? You better change the times or you get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. and, and not just even wrestling, but you see that in a lot of things. Like uh, like I used to think about Mike Singletary, who's a uh, coach for the Forty uh, Nine. Yeah, good point. He was always I'm old school and I don't take none of this stuff. It's like listen, when you paying these guys forty something million dollars, you better shut up and do your job. That's he didn't get rid of him. He got rid of him. The 49ers yeah. go into the NFC Championship game. Because they, he probably feels dumb because he didn't want to change. He was mm -hmm. I'm old school. You know, that's how it's going to be. Like, this ain't the Bears when you played, buddy. <laughs> and I felt the same way about Harker Holly. Because even when he, you know, even when he, he was around for a while. Because <laughs> like, like, even when he was on ECW, I believe in the old sub, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> you know, when he came back from ECW and he was trying to, you know, they tried to he got that big gash from uh, yeah. RVD when he uh, suplexed him off the rope. Woo! You see all the the WWE don't try this at home videos. Yeah, it's uh, always there. You see him, they, you, he had a really bad stab infection too in his elbow. I think that's when he tried, when he left originally, I mean, okay. around that time. But you, you see him leave and come back and you see them try to do something with him. Mm -hmm. But nobody, like, you know, this this was his time right here, you know, with him and yeah. Crash Holly and okay, that was, you know, that's Harker movie. I think this was the highlight of his career. But um, I don't know. Nobody just nobody bought into it. I mean, it was good to see him from being race car by pilot to then sparky plugs. And then he was you know, plugs. and then he was part of the job squad. He still had the long blonde hair with the pin me pay me t-shirt on, <laughs> half cut t-shirt. Him and Scorpio and Al Snow and he's Stevie Richards at one point. And then it's like okay, he finally became hardcore hot, and everybody's getting with him. But after a while, I was like, you've been ruined. Yeah. And then you look at Billy Gunn. I mean. Here's one of the pound for pound best athletes on the card. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make yeah, certainly you're gonna say he's one of the best wrestlers, with the exception of Owen Hart. Naturally. But you wanted him to break through that glass ceiling, but I'm sorry, but the Mr. A double crooked letter gimmick was not a face of the company. Can you imagine you walking around with a champion now? I don't know. It's just that was this time, but if, if that if that wasn't gonna get over, obviously the one Billy Gunn wasn't. That that was <laughs> that was punishment. I got mad when you said that. That was horrible. Ding, ding, ding. I don't, I don't even Look at that. all I've got. I, it's it's <laughs> that was horrible. It's, hey, Rock, I like pie, and he brings out cheesecake. Okay. Really? Hey, I'm just saying. You know, it's it's like it's. You you saw him trying to get that singles push, and it's like okay, but it, he would do too much sometimes. They come up with the see through trunks and the thong under. It's like see, I you know. Yeah, if he could have just been Billy Gunn, he he probably have been better off. If, if he didn't have to feed into the character so much, if, they, mm -hmm. if that's your nickname, okay. But don't make that like you know that was sort of everything he did. Everything has something to do with his butt. He was pulling his pants <laughs> down and moving people. I remember even on like WrestleMania in two thousand, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you had the little the the joystick in the N sixty four. And one of his tongues will be him pulling his pants out. You see the pixelated blur. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, okay. See, so I, I don't think that fit for, like I said, even in, in the Attitude Era, it's like, that's, you know. When he mooned Ryan Shamrock. Yeah, but you got to compete. You know, it, it's, it's, I feel bad for him saying this, you know, as we move on. He had to compete with the top of the top during that time. But And, and I guess you can only take the tag team gimmick so far because, I mean, they were, like we said when we had Road Dog on the show. Right. They were, at one point, the top top guys that you came to and see, they, and they say that though. They say, you know, it, you know, you hear their shoot interviews all the time, and they always say at one point, you know, our, our belts are higher than the world titles. Mm -hmm. That can be argument, but the argument, but it still was, it, it was legit. still must feed. It was must see TV when the mm -hmm. Outlaws came out there. They made those tag titles important. Oh, definitely. You know what I mean? So you know. Um. Now this next match, 
Mind you, WrestleMania 15, taking place in 1999, right. it's the first time where we have a Sunday Night Heat that follows. You know, before you had your free for but right. now you have a legitimate show where that's on USA every Monday, I mean, excuse me, every Sunday night, and now you see it, then this is what I used to love about that time, because if I, want, I, could, if I wasn't going to watch the pay-per-view... I could see what the set was going to look like. I did. I used to love that. I used to love that. Yes. Because <laughs> it's like you got the Sunday night with the dark matches. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They just turned the show into it. Yep. I used to love that because, like I said, you, you, you would turn it into, uh, like you said, you've seen a set and you would try to watch as much as you can. Like, oh, it's going off. Okay, now I transition into the paper. You're like, no, no, no. Oh, it goes off. Yep. It's like, oh, man. And then you see um, Jacqueline. First, Jacqueline takes on uh, Ivory. And the reason why I mentioned this match because Ivory would later come on. And rest, um, be in the corner of the losers who were, uh, I mean, the winners of the Battle Royal, Test and D'Lo Brown, mm -hmm. who were going against the tag team champs, Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett, which at the time we didn't know, but this would go on to be, ladies and gentlemen, Owen Hart's very last WrestleMania. And with Jeff Jarrett, who said that Owen Hart was the best tag team partner he's ever had. Yeah. Now, I said to say that. Yeah, the match was quick, but they st the you can see you put a heel and a baby face because Tess is still part of the corporation. Mm -hmm. You put a heel and a baby face, and all you do is get in conflict right. throughout the whole match, and that's what allowed Owen Hart and Jeff Jarrett to just take over. Then the brawl for all match. I was about to say, what about your fat boy Butter Bean uh, <laughs> knocking out Mark Gunn? So we got both guns going down in WrestleMania, uh, just as they did at WrestleMania 11 against Yokozuna and Owen. Heart. Um, 35 seconds says it all. Wow! Now, sitting back, listening to a bunch of interviews, talking with you, Butterbean wanted to make this entertaining. Right. But Gunn said, no, let's make it a straight shoot. Yeah. Now, you've been knocking out JBL, who at the time was just Justin Hawk Bradshaw. Right. You've been knocking out Karma, the Supreme Fighting Machine, Dan the B. Severin, Dr. Death Steve Williams. I remember that one. But now you're going against a legit... Oh, Mark Merrow. Mark Merrow. Now you're going against a legitimate boxer. <laughs> yeah. Um, hello? I think he was feeling himself because he had won so many. He was like, I'm really good at this. Like, Yeah, you know, like... Man. Yeah, pow, pow. He knocked down, gets back up. Pow, pow, pow. It's over. Didn't say no more. This next match is interesting. And you talk about story time. Mick Foley... Said at you know he wanted to be in the main event at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be you know obviously we knew he it wasn't gonna be Stone Cold versus Mankind at WrestleMania. Not when you have the Great One sitting there in the prime. I was about to say in his prime, ready <laughs> in, in with his this prime. gorgeous WWE Championship belt. Uh, uh. Now, how do we get Mankind? In the main event, somebody who's given so much to this business, hmm, put him in a match where the winner becomes a special guest referee. You get Mankind taking on the big show. Paul White. At the time. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, man, big show, letting his motions get the best of him, choke slams Mankind right through the st uh, chair. Mm -hmm. Here comes Vince McMahon. What are you doing? Fossing at him. He slaps him. People grab him by the neck. Ah, yeah, I'm Vince McMahon. You hear me? I'm Vince McMahon. What? Picks him up, choke slam, or did he not one of the two? He gets arrested. But there we have it, Mankind, who's hurt. And then there's a promo later on where Vince McMahon goes, I'm going to be the special guest referee. So we thought. Yeah, but he's, he's all, he, he comes out there with that big old shirt. It was amazing. Yeah, I I think this was a really good. It's, like I said, it was good to see a guy like um, um, the Big Show in his first WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fresh out of WCW. You know, adjusting to the WWE style. He's been working with Undertaker and then that's the, you know all the stuff to come and what was happening at the time. Mm -hmm. It was good to see him fall fall into the you know like he was a guy that when he came in, like today is different. When a guy comes in, he expects to be automatically pushed to the top WWE right. Championship. But it was good for him, a guy like him to come in and fit in. It mm -hmm. only adds to the product. I mean, I'm actually mad I missed out on WrestleMania. I, I should have thought about it. I should have stole this for my, my five. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, God damn, it's a good WrestleMania. Uh -huh. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, 
it, but this, it was really good, like I said, to see a guy like that. And like I said, it, it you were able to put Ad McFoley uh, to the mix in some way, shape, or form without mm -hmm. just giving him a, a random squash match or you know, or you know, showing Big Show the ropes because you know he was a new guy on the block. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, so good match. I yeah, enjoyed it definitely. And of course, Vince always had to get involved. Vince always got involved in a lot of stuff. Was yeah. man, he, he, people underestimate what he did for the business as far as his own screen character. He really, you know, influenced a lot of. Oh, things certainly. Going on, so. Then you have, before there was a Fatal 4-Way match, mm. they called this a Four Corners match. That's old school. Yeah. And I feel old saying it's old school. I'm still young. I'm like, And it's school. for the Intercontinental title. Right. It's Road Dogg, Jesse James, defeating Shamrock, Goldust, and the Blue Me, uh, excuse me, Shamrock, Goldust, and Val Venus. Then mind you, Ryan Shamrock's the wild card, mm -hmm. who's been, as JR would say, smitten with everybody. And this is where we go back to the Billy Gunn Road Dog switch. Right. Because Billy Gunn would fit perfect in this match because, you know, he started it. He the one who comes out there and moons her. Then you have Val Venus who does a video saving. I really did not know he was a porn star back in the day. I just want to put like I did not like I knew he was like this sexual guy, but I was like Saving oh. Ryan's privates. I didn't I just didn't get it when I was younger. I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, oh, so he was a porn star. I get it now. The music right. and the screw and the... <laughs> and then you have Goldust, who at one point was his girlfriend, and the mini gets mad. She got around. And, and and she had a nutcase in Ken Shamrock for a brother. She was gorgeous, though. She was, yeah. she was gorgeous. Yeah. Nonetheless, Road Dog says... She's no tomato, but... You guys are fighting over Ryan Shamrock. Right. I'm fighting over my title, and he wins. Mm -hmm. Now, this next match... Came with the corporations, um, I don't know what you want to call it, China. That's <laughs> what? Taking on Triple H. Now, to build up to this one, Triple China turns on Triple H in an I Quit match between The Rock and Triple H the day after the Royal Rumble, 99. Naturally. And, you know, because Kane comes up there, grabs China by the neck, holds up, and Ryan said, mm -mm, I said, and um, the, the Shane McMahon says, you better say I quit or he's going to break her in half. No, no. He's like, it's true way to act like, oh, yeah, he ain't going to do nothing. It's about the pedigree to rock through the table. He's like, no. You think I'm playing? Holds up. All right, all right. I quit. And they say, you know, he lets her go. He triple H's like, come on, come on. What does China do? She goes down. Boom. Go downstairs with a low blow. She's a member of the corporation now. He wasn't too long to follow, so it's not that bad. Uh -huh. Joking. He, he wasn't too far after her anyway, so. Right, but, that's, you know, so in this match, you know, and then you also had a storyline where Kane shoots the fireball. He tried to hit Triple H or some, yeah, he hits China and he messes up her eye. And then you see, next thing you know, China turns on Triple H because she hits Kane in the head with a chair, which causes Kane to get, or Triple yeah, Kane is, wins the match by disqualification. But DX reunited and stronger than ever before. And they're prepping for the match to come later, which is X-Pac and um, Shane, Shane McMahon. McMahon. Right. But before we go there, we have the lovely Sable taking on Tori. I actually cared about this match. Me too. Because I, I was just, uh, whew, Sable. Oh, yeah. Sable was gorgeous in 99. O three Sable was just like okay you're 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 you're, you're hot but by you're the time, starting to become a cougar now yeah because by by the time we had already saw so many gorgeous women in between see back when Sable first she was the first real wrestling vixen yeah. you know you had what? Sunny you know who was come on now who don't even start that yeah, I was gonna say Sunny you would say but she wasn't wrestling she was a manager though she was a manager okay wrestling yeah she I got she, it, yeah. she was a non screen personality mm -hmm. but Sable actually had beefs you know I think the most notable was the first major with Mark Merrill and Jacqueline. Yeah. You know, she actually got in the ring. She had no offense. She actually did a lot better in her matches, those early matches, where Sabre really wasn't a wrestler. You mm -hmm. know, and when she, you know, we all know she came in as a manager of valet to Mark Merrill. No, Triple H. Triple H, yeah, and then, you know, he started beefing, and then, you know, Mark Merrill uh, took over, and then, you know, Trey Stark, we know that storyline, but, you know, she was just, you know, Ring cannon, but then when she got in the ring, she really kicked tail, mm -hmm. and, and it looked convincing. It wasn't just a hair grabbing. Now you got your fair share of hair grabbing. Yeah, but you know the sable bomb, the TKO she did. You know, she really turned it up in the ring. You saw it. You, you saw a different look of her on her face. So right. seeing that in the ring, she because she was the first real one. You know, mm -hmm. she was gorgeous. And then you started off. You had Tori 
who was kind of like what Mickey James would do to Trish. Right. She would yeah, talk about when they recycle storylines, nothing new under the sun, but when it works at the right given time. Naturally. This is one of those given times. But, you know, she comes out there and she stalks Trish. And, I mean, star, uh, Tori stalks Sable. Not so much to stalk her, but try and help her. The stable, Sable, she become a part of, she gets the Playboy center uh, fold and she's larger than life, lets her head get bigger and I actually start liking her because she comes out and she's dancing now and she's looking more gorgeous than she was ever before and you know she sit up there, you can see Jimmy Corderas sit up there when he's doing the, you know, the pat down, he's like right. really checking her out mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like yeah, but nonetheless Sable goes over, what the hell with Nicole Bass yeah, I remember when Michael that was, girl. Whew, Sable didn't even need to do the Sable bomb. But yeah, Sable. Too bad she couldn't stay around. She uh, uh, before we move on, she left the WWE. <laughs> now let's let's call it for what it is. In '99, we was nothing but a bunch of horny teenagers. <laughs> and she left the WWE, which means she left. That was the biggest eye candy we had at the time. Because in my opinion, she always looked better than Deborah. Only to. Ooh, that's the. Uh, mm. Ain't really much of a challenge. I don't know. That's that's uh. Mm. Man, up here, right here, Sable all day. Okay. <laughs> she was my point. Yeah. So, you know, she left because they wanted her to do lesbian things in a ring in front of children. Only to come back four years later in two thousand three to do the same thing with Tori Wilson. McMahon's hoes. Man, ain't got that money. Yeah, it's look. like, it, it, it's, 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 it's funny how he always tried to break one of the new girls in as one of his, uh, yeah, skeechies. But it's like, I don't, you know, I don't know the backdrop story between that. Maybe you can shed some light on the situation. But I don't, you know. She, I mean, she came back and did the same thing. That, yeah, I Maybe she are. thought because, yeah, I'm a Playboy now. She started filming something. Yeah. And then you got out there, she, she was on this show. They used to come on UPN. That just totally flopped. I think I remember something about. It. I think I remember seeing a commercial about that. Yeah, it, 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 I, I used. I mean, naturally, was Sable. So any, you know, I watched it, but it was just like now. Nah, they well, that show sucked. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I was allowed to stay up that late to watch that. It, it came on like on Saturday nights around eight, eight or nine. It, yeah. it sucked. It wasn't nothing hardcore porn or softcore pornish. My bedtime was like eight thirty. Uh, right understand. It was rough back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, come a long way. You know what I'm saying? Pops ain't play that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Probably because he wanted to watch TV all the stuff. But that's, you know, it, you know. Man, I used to have to watch the, only the first hour on Raw. That's how, that's how it was me. <laughs> 9 o'clock, that was it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking to see, like, the first hour of WCW. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, Rory, come on. Yeah. I got caught. Child. Anyway. But then we go back to the McMahons and the corporation. Because the corporation was hot. I don't care what anybody said. Corporation was hot. Shit, right, it's, man, man. No chance in hell. You've got. That was. The corporation was like. And see, here's the thing about a uh, difference between a product back then and now. Like, before, before the the wrestling got so big that it needed two brands. Mm -hmm. You just had Raw, you know what I'm saying? Then you know SmackDown came and said it wasn't a separate brand. You know, yeah. it, was just, it was just another show. Um, it was like a company wide storyline because people, everybody didn't need a storyline because you could get involved in the corporation. You could be a good corporation. You you can be always involved in a main event company wide yep. storyline. And I think it benefited because with the NWO going down the toilet. Same concept of having this major group, and then of course you got McMahon at the helm because he was like, you know, he was just the heel, mm -hmm. um, and, and it worked. And you got a guy like Shadow Man who was just like this pipsqueak jerk, you know, who played his role very well with your favorite guys like Triple H and X Pac. Every everything was just. Ninety nine was a really hot year. <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. We need to ship. do a show on ninety nine. That we really could do that though. Yeah. I think that the best of ninety nine because like you had Jericho coming in the mix, you had Big Show coming in the mix, you had Kurt Angle rise, you had Ken Shamrock taking Al off. Al Snow actually made you somewhat care about him with his whole feud with the Boss Man when he cooked pepper. That, that made a uh, that you that they made the hardcore storylines important. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ninety nine was a hot year for us, especially they with even, WWE. They even put the big the belt on the Big Show. To kind of, so Triple H and McMahon could focus on their battle, and you know they said, "All right, we're gonna give the WWE Championship a back seat right now." Only, and I say only for Vince. And, I mean Stephanie and Triple H to get together to set us up for two thousand. That's how you. Oh my goodness. <sighs> we just had a moment. You yeah. have to excuse us. Mark out moment, but it's okay. 
These are times where it's okay. This is this is where it's appropriate. Yeah. You're reminiscing on past wrestling events that made you love the business as mm -hmm. much as you love it today. Exactly. We're not, we're not watching the shows and go, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> oh, that makes no sense. <laughs> what? What's happening? So, you know, you, you, you see, like you said, Shane McMahon was that jerk. Yeah. And everybody just wanted to see, see him get his. Get his. X Pac was ready. He set up the doors promo, and he's got his boys, got his back. And Shane McMahon, he comes out with Tess, and he's got his boys, Rodney, Pete Gas. Oh, the uh, uh, Mean Street Posse. Yeah, the Mean Street Posse. <laughs> I forgot the. Uh, who was it? Joey, Joey Abs, Abs, Rodney, and Pete, Pete Gas. Yeah, with they, the sweater vest. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was wearing sweater vests in '99, though. That, I, I, I will admit that was the closest I got to a wrestling costume. I yeah, exactly, because you could wear that without, you know, you could if, if, if your parents wouldn't want to buy you a rock shirt to wear to church. You know, give me a sweater vest. I was always peek at because I was the biggest one in the group. They okay, made, they made me the fat one. <laughs> so, so you sit up there, you just know Shane McMahon is delivering a beating. He's like, yes. I mean, um, X Pac is delivering a beating to Shane McMahon. X Pac is gonna get this title back. Here comes China. Okay, she's coming out to even the odds. Only for Triple H to come out. Boom! Pedigree. Oh my gosh! Another WrestleMania double cross. Mm -hmm. That's what the that's what it's about. The double crosses at WrestleMania. Why? Cause it's the pinnacle of sports entertainment. So wrestling sucks compared to back in the day. I just thought of wrestling sucks. <laughs> no, you can't. I'm saying, I'm it's saying, different. Like, dang, it's son. different. I'm not gonna say it sucks. It does, man. It's just like dang. But you think because right, you, you, you think about this, right? And I mean, we could go on and on. I think you know what that need to be a show. The, the the double crosses at WrestleMania. Think about when we thought in WrestleMania 26, where McMahon had actually turned the Hart family against Brent. They tried. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm sitting up there and watching this with. Shout out, rest in peace, my favorite uncle, Uncle Mike. We sitting up there, me, my father, all my boys, we in the basement, and we're watching this. And I'm sitting up there like, I look at them, I said, yo, I don't believe this. What's your man? The entire Hart family is like, oh, crap. <laughs> I'm like, they really just did. I, I, Diana, we, uh, Diana Hart, we're going we to have to talk about this one. I went, I, I, that, was, that was genius. Shout out to the Hart family. We love you. And then the friends of the program. Brett gets the mic, and for everybody who said Brett has no charisma, he can't work the mic. He's, Shut up. Yeah. So this was you, and then he looks at the most conniving brother of them all, according to all the books and the mm -hmm. literature, mm -hmm. Bruce Hart. Yeah. It's a bitter one. And, and you're the you're the referee. This I and Bruce just has the glass on him. <laughs> the bitter heart. Yeah. <laughs> That's his new name. Mike calls Mike and Dean Smith Elderheart. Wow. And now you're calling Bruce Bitterheart. Yeah, he just obviously didn't get that. <laughs> now, I, I know we're talking about WrestleMania 9, but let's just go right here real quick. So then, all of a sudden, Brett exposed like, nah, we knew he was going to do this. And then, what happens? We took your money, Vince. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then they just deliver a beating. I was like, I used to get that. Just beat down by the hearts. And, and, and how about Natalia? No love for the hearts. She could just sit up there. <laughs> How many of those smacks, I wonder, was she thinking about Uncle Owen? Oh, yeah. It you know, how many of those, no matter what happened, no matter how much reconciliation, you, you, you can't blame Vince, but then again, you can, because they said, and just and I'm just based on if these things are true, that it was Vince who said, well, let's get him something he can come out of faster mm -hmm. from being lowered down. So how many of those slaps? How many of those were for you know? I'm mean, you, you can't help but wonder that. Like they, they, they were some hard hits. Yeah. And Vince McMahon, no one Vince, like we do. He yeah. said, you know, give it to me as hard, hard as, as you can. can. Exactly. <laughs> like one time Randy wanted to punch him in the head, he just he took that his shoelace, cut his face. I was like, woo! Yeah. I would love to have a manager like that. I mean, it's dedic dedication to the business. It is the crap. <laughs> Just like, y'all, come on, hit me up. I think somebody else was talking about that, too, uh, a lot of times. Right, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, old flair. <laughs> yeah. So, back to, back to 99. See, it's not even, the rest of me is not even over yet. Yeah. It just so, keeps getting better. Triple H is the pedigree. Hey, let me hold this joint before you leave, too, because I got to watch the uh, oh, uh, 15 again. Yeah, you, you will love it. I'm trying I got to watch that one again. I'm like, man, I forgot about that yeah. one. Yeah. Um, so, you know, pedigree, one, two, three. Shane McMahon wins. We're all mad. Now. I'm glad you said it earlier. You see, I get excited when we talk about WrestleMania 15. For the longest time, I see. for the longest time, this was my second favorite WrestleMania. Really now? 
Yeah. Okay. And sometimes even tied for first. My, my first four, I would say, they all kind of switch at, depending on how I'm feeling. So we go to The Undertaker mm -hmm. versus The Big Boss Man in Hell in a Cell. I remember this. Now, to borrow a line from one of my favorite announcers, Art Cow, they hung him with rope. Yeah. Um, now, before we get there, you have the Ministry of Darkness taking on the corporation. Yeah. Because they scared the pants off. The Taker day. has this higher power that he's listening to, and then meant she too will be mine. Mm -hmm. All of this for them two to come together. Just to go against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who thinks of stuff like this? All in one show, though. Right. And, and, and it's only to set up an even bigger storyline. It's, you know, it's like, it's, it's, <laughs> with the top guys in your company. <laughs> so you got to, okay. You got to take with the, the top, <laughs> With the top guys in your company, you have, like, every to them, you mm -hmm. know, because it always comes back to them, like you said. You got to incorporate so many other storylines into the same, you know, this one big idea, this storyline, mm -hmm. and even bigger double cross, this higher power, you know, to hold everything just, just to go against the one guy that Vince hates the most. <laughs> exactly. It's like we got to, we got to join these two factions, two, we, two, two heel factions, because they were not nice guys by any means. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to take on one guy. <laughs> it's just like one. You see McMahon's hatred, and you, you see the dynamic between uh, Undertaker and Austin. Uh, trying to be that top guy, you know, mm -hmm. Undertaker did, like, as, as J.R. said, he embellished the Undertaker's character. And Mr. Man just hated him so much, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And, and and to have all that lead to that again, it's like, it just hooks you, after it hooks you up. It was like, there was no drop-off. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you have to watch the entire show, because it all somehow added together, which I think is the best way to do any type of wrestling show, is when you can take every other storyline and incorporate it to an even bigger storyline, you know, with your matches in between, like, the women's matches and, you know, yeah. stuff like that. It's just these, like I say, when when the company was much smaller, mm -hmm. you had these company wide storylines, and, yeah. and and I thought it was really good for the business because you watched the entire show. Mm -hmm. Because the people that you did see that weren't storylines were people that you you liked anyway, like your Road Dogs and your Ass Nose and the Hardcore, because everybody loved Hardcore match because that was the year of Hardcore anyway. Yeah. Um, ECW had even taken off, and the WWE, WWF at the time had embraced that Hardcore style and was running with it. You know that that, that was an interesting. At first, everybody thought the Hardcore Championship was a joke. But mm -hmm. people really liked it, and people still love it. So then you have matches like that in between. It's like, man, you don't. You, there is no reason to change the channel. There's no reason to to take commercial break or walk away to get some nachos or something at a yeah. WrestleMania party near you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's just that I, I really should have chose. Uh, I'm still in, officially still in his uh, uh, WrestleMania. It's like I ain't gonna do that. But you know, people say that this wasn't the. I mean, they might say that this might have been a good Undertaker match, but. I mean, I was a fan of the, the that Undertaker. Like, you take all the Undertakers and you rank them. This is my favorite one. I the did like them. The '99 Undertaker with the, the the big old um the robe? costume yeah. robish thing with the with the nail top and you know that I don't music. Know what you call that thing? I don't either. But that, that, that James Bond music. Dude, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that though. I will say that. I keep that on my phone. I mean, I walk around campus. You know, when I'm in my mode getting ready for class, you know, people might be looking at me like, what is he listening to? Especially if my earphones up. Yeah, don't mess with me. Isn't that the same one on uh, WWF, the music volume three? That's the same one. Oh, uh, right? yeah. yeah. That's what I thought, yeah. So, I'm, oh man, you know, it, it, amazing. I, I was not, I think my favorite Undertaker was, was pre that, uh, when he was beef with Austin. Okay. From about 90s, late 97, early 90, late 98. Okay, yeah. You know, before. Hell, hell, highway to Hell? Yeah, yeah, that was my friend. I, I be, like you saw shades of the ministry coming together, you know. What I'm saying? Well, I, and I guess yeah, I kind of look at that all as one. You know, I see where no, you break it yeah. up. Yeah, that but was I, I, the yeah. precursor. It's, yeah, because you see like you know a, a timeline, but uh, like I said, I, and it's funny because I was never a fan of Bossman originally. Back I knew he was as a kid, but then <laughs> but when he came, I actually liked it when he came back though with the whole SWAT. You know, yeah. he, he was able to redo it in a, in a new in a new way at the beginning of WCW for a while. Loved him as a heel. Oh yeah, absolutely. He, he, you he know, he nice made stick. you hate him. Later on in 99, when, how could you break up a man's father's funeral? Like, that's how you draw heat. Oh, it. heck yeah, yeah. You that's know. Just, I mean, show. they had you hooked like you. I mean, me, at the time, 
99, everybody's sitting up there yelling at me, telling me wrestling's fake, and I don't want to hear nothing anybody's saying. And I'm sitting there looking like... It was hard to, to tell the difference. Really, Ro, you know, is driving away trying to steal the casket. And you see Big Show's big tail on top of the <laughs> casket like that. Yeah. It, we, 99 needs a show. It was, <laughs> man, no, we got to get 99 a show because we definitely just completely went off topic. But that, I don't care. Like, when it's hard to figure out when you're a kid if it's real or not when something like that is happening on exactly. TV. It's like, okay, I know wrestling's not, but that, nah, like Bishop said, yeah. I don't know. But something about that, though. Yeah. I don't know. And then, you know, obviously Undertaker wins. And wait a minute, who's on the top of the cage? Two out of three future World Heavyweight Champions are part of the Ministry of Darkness, The Brood. Wow. Gangrel, Edge, and Christian. Who would later, Edge and Christian next year would go ahead and steal the next WrestleMania. But you see where this is, you know, you see future stars, Natural. like you said, mixing them all in one. Main right. event storylines. And then the, the way they went on about that, like, we don't get 99 sure. I can't go no more on that one. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the next night, minutes. though, like, they, they, I mean. 99. Yeah. Getting a show. And then you have the main event. Of main events, of main events, where you take the biggest, the most electrifying star in a brand today, and then you take the most popular star in the brand, and you put him in the main event at WrestleMania. Hmm. Stone Cold Steve Austin challenging The Rock, the people's champion, the corporate champion. Now, I remember this. Like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. 1999, there was a show titled Wrestle Talk America. They used to come on 10, 10 a.m. No, 10.90 a.m. in Baltimore. And The Rock was on that show the night before. And he said, bottom line, The Rock is either walking out the corporate champion or the people's champion. Oh, boy. So I was sitting there listening. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. And then, mind you, I don't know it's predetermined. And when I say this, I'm not lying. You know, I prayed that Stone Cold won the match. You know, not to mention, this is the first time there's a black man in the main event at WrestleMania since WrestleMania 1. Because The Rock is black. Thank you. But the story between these two. You know, you got the biggest, the two biggest stars by far. Naturally. Going yeah. at And the match did not fail to deliver. I mean, they were all over the place. Three referees. First of all, Vince McMahon comes up and says he's going to be the ref. Naturally. Shawn Michaels comes up, uh-uh. Because Shawn Michaels would always refer to that WWE rule book. And you always know Bobby <laughs> was, was with that, though. I remember he did it all the time. Like he, and he would like never know what it was. He pulled out a rule book. Oh, and a rule book says, like, where does he get that from? Why do you have that? Is that real? He was the commissioner, you know. He definitely was. Yeah. And then, Vince McMahon, you go sit down. So Earl Hebner, oh, at this time, you remember, Jr. had been battling Bell's Palsy. Yeah. And um, he was he was ready to come back. They brought him back because Austin re requested it. The next night, Jr. goes on about this rant, and he bursts up his own announcer booth. And he has Dr. Dusty. I, I, I remember that, though. Because I, I remember the commercial. I was like, what are they, what are they cooking over? Like, fixing up. Mmm, <laughs> Carl was putting stuff together. Yeah. Well, he, they did it on Raw a couple of times. Yep. Like, he would come the out there. The first time, the next night. You're like, why is JR? <laughs> He's got his own with Dr. Dusty Williams yep. in there. Because WCW ended up making fun of him later over that same group. So, yeah, like, that which was just ridiculous. Shame on you, Ed Ferrero and uh, Fritz Russo. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, th then... He gets hurt, and Mick Foley arrives, and he gets to be in a WrestleMania moment. And The Rock is defeated after that, the most sold Stone Cold Stunner, where he bounced. Yeah, like Rock said, he, no one ever will sell that joint better than The Rock. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, what a match. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot. I think that's on my iPod, as a matter of fact. Act right. one. Match. Act two, act three. Stone Cold versus The Rock. Which one is your favorite match? The very first one. Okay. The very first because I think I think um, the last one was really good, but um, I, I I like I just like the first one so much because like you said it was The Rock in his prime. Mm -hmm. You know WWF champion. You know after you know you like. I like to measure I measure wrestling by WrestleMania. So like I said, like at a superstar from one period to the next. Mm -hmm. We had a guy like The Rock. Um, the pre WrestleMania, he was fighting a Shamrock, bleeding from the mouth, something like that. And just in, in that short year in between, 
to see him rise to what he was. I think, yeah. in my opinion, I was. I think that was. I can't say it was the most popular, but I, like that was a really, really popular the time. The Rock really broke through, and he didn't just mm -hmm. break through. Like, like I think Triple H broke through, but Rock really ascended, yeah. and he became on the same level with Stone Cold at one point. And the only reason anybody might even give Stone Cold points over the Rock is because he did it first. Right. Um, but um, you know, I, I just that match was just. I, I think it was the best one between them. Like I said, that was my favorite Rock. You know, because like okay. I said, he had been. You know, that's when I enjoyed him the most. That's when mm -hmm. I was. A, Fan of him uh, the most, um, you know when he just had broken through and, and on out, and, you know he had the sideburns and uh, mm -hmm. and then you had Stone Cold naturally who was just you know on fire naturally you know because he was healthy and everything was still moving right and Stone Cold <laughs> was doing his thing and I, just the first match was the I think was the most anticipated yeah. um, in my opinion because that was the match eventually we everybody was sort of you know talking about you know I can't imagine how the older people were you know watching it with. You know how we are now. We're older. We understand things now. We see things right. differently. We can figure out things, spoil us, different opinions. As a kid, you know, mm -hmm. you, 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 only, only thing you knew about wrestling was you watched either, you know, uh, Sunday Night Heat and some Saturday Morning Live Wire or whatever. Shotgun Saturday Shotgun Night. Shotgun Saturday Night. You know, or, or or then Monday. That's the only time you knew what was going on. Or mm -hmm. the magazines. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, uh, internet had just came in, but it wasn't a household thing. Like, you, I would try to go to the library just to get on the internet so I could see wrestling stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, uh, where I was at the time, watching that and seeing, you know, these two guys clash the way they did, I just enjoyed it the most. I mean, mm -hmm. that was just, like I said, this, the first one's the best. The last one I enjoyed a lot, too. But uh, that, that first one definitely just mm -hmm. stands out in my mind as one of my all-time favorites. The middle one was great. It's just the finish I didn't like. Okay. You know, I didn't like, it was just making Stone Cold a heel. Yeah, you know the, the nobody up, bought it. Yeah, and, and even he says it now. The build-ups though, in all of them, were awesome. Yeah. And you know, you take it. It's a shame that the careers had, you know, that Austin's career had to be cut short. Mm -hmm. And you know, and excuse me, you can even say kind of took on a late start because just imagine if Vince McMahon would have discovered a Steve Austin, not so much a Stone Cold Steve Austin, but a Steve Austin the wrestler. Earlier, you know, right. when he was such a good wrestler when him and Brian Pillman was teaming up, but for him to go over in this match and then do the toast, it was it was awesome. Okay, you know, but ladies and gentlemen, I know we went on and on about WrestleMania 15 and more so the year 1999. 99. So we, you know, <clears throat> those who love the Attitude Era, we gonna give it to you. We gonna give you a, a show on 99. We might, yeah, we gonna, we might break down the years of the Attitude Era. Ah, we'll see. That's fun. We'll figure out what we want to do. Three years? 97, 98, 99? Yeah. Well, you know, they technically no, say the end of 2001. Yeah, yeah the end of 2001. Because the merger. At WrestleMania, yeah. Okay. We'll see. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this episode as we look back at WrestleMania, top five WrestleManias. He is the real Dwayne Allen. I am Mr. Main Event Brian Waters. Get ready because he's going to bring you his number four. And it's not as good as his. <laughs> so how about that? Just don't don't have high expectations. Well, you never know. No, nah, no. Nah. Quit. I tap. Nah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to tune into the next one. And we're out. Boy. Wow. <laughs> no,